As I went about my preparations to leave Master and my native land for the unknown shores of America, I experienced not a little trepidation. One early morning I began to pray, with an adamant determination to continue, even to die praying, until I heard the voice of God. I wanted His blessing. I prayed and prayed, muffling my sobs. No answer came. At noon, I reached a zenith. My head was reeling under the pressure of my agonies. I felt that if I cried once more, increasing the depth of my inner passion, my brain would split. At that moment, there came a knock on the door of my Garpa Road home. Answering the summons, I beheld a young man in the scanty garb of a renunciant, he entered the house. It must be Babaji, I thought, dazed, because the man before me had the features of a young Lahiri Mahashai. He answered my thought, Yes, I am Babaji. He spoke melodiously in Hindi. Our Heavenly Father has heard your prayer. He commands me to tell you. Follow the behests of your Guru and go to America. Fear not. You shall be protected. After a vibrant pause, Babaji addressed me again. You are the one I have chosen to spread the message of Kriya Yoga in the West. Long ago, I met your Guru, Yukteswar, at a Kumbha Mela. I told him then I would send you to him for training. I was speechless, choked with devotional awe at his presence, and deeply touched to hear from his own lips that he had guided me to Sri Yukteswar. I lay prostrate before the deathless Guru. He graciously lifted me up. After telling me many things about my life, with a gaze of majestic power, the Master electrified me with a glimpse of his cosmic consciousness. In a short while, Babaji started toward the door, remarking, Do not try to follow me. You will not be able to do so. Please, Babaji, don't go away. 
I cried repeatedly. Take me with you. He replied, not now. Some other time. Overcome by emotion, I disregarded his warning. As I tried to pursue him, I discovered that my feet were firmly rooted to the floor. Babaji gave me a last affectionate glance. My eyes were fixed on him longingly as he raised his hand by way of benediction and walked away. After a few minutes my feet were free. I sat down and went into a deep meditation, unceasingly thanking God not only for answering my prayer but for blessing me by a meeting with Babaji. My whole body seemed sanctified through the touch of the ancient, ever youthful master. Long had it been my burning desire to behold him. Until now, I have never recounted to anyone this story of my meeting with Babaji. Holding it as the most sacred of my human experiences, I have hidden it in my heart. But the thought occurred to me that readers of this autobiography would be more inclined to believe in the reality of the secluded Babaji with his world interests if I relate that I have seen him with my own eyes. Oh.